Hey there, it's the person you forgot you subscribed to. I've been gone quite a while, but I'm still working on giving you a reason to remember me. So I appreciate you just checking in and watching this update. Despite my unwritten oath that I wasn't going to make any more of these. And unfortunately, like many, COVID-19 has affected my life, so I haven't been focusing on YouTube that much. But I promise you, I plan on making more videos soon. Trust me, I really wish I could do something to lift your spirits up. But unfortunately, because of this pandemic, a lot of events have had to cancel, including E3. It's usually about this time I give my opinions on what's being presented there. So, to substitute this, I'm just going to talk about the current trailer releases. Or teaser releases. The PS5 has finally graced us with its presence. In my opinion, like the other PlayStations, it's like the graphical technical leap seems to get less and less, to the point where they need someone to explain why you should be excited for what's to come. Like they'll have someone giving you the lowdown on, hey, you can see the lines in this leaf over there, or get a load of the skin paws and crow's feet on Kratos' face. It's weird not seeing that full sexy black look. We haven't seen something like that since the original PlayStation. We got Resident Evil 8. But I love trailers that you can't figure out what it is until the very end. Even though when you rewatch it you can say, oh wait, yeah, it's kind of connected. Apart from the whole appearance of Chris. It doesn't seem to capture the magic of RE7 though. I guess they gotta come out with a demo to put the chill back in our spines. It kind of looks like what I expect RE4 to look like. I mean, the remake, of course. Maybe there's some kind of link? Outlast 3 is coming out. I hope it does better than Outlast 2 did, but it does feel like they're working with what worked before, with the whole Asylum. Again, banking on that whole Rubber Johnny vision. Hey, but it's just a first impression. Don't worry, I'm not going to go on about the spooky stuff. Well, less spooky stuff with Death Grounds. It's been a while since we saw dinosaurs being scary. But it's great to see something like this, but hey, wait a minute, is this aliens? Hey, the whole thing looks like alien isolation. Again, personally, I don't mind, even though I probably should, but I just love dinosaurs, especially when they go nom nom on people. Anyway, there's Project Aether or Aphia, the latest from Square Enix, and there's nothing more I can really think about it because it just feels like the gender swap version of the Wanderer painting. It's quite forgettable, unlike Volcano High, at last something with style, despite not knowing anything else. It feels a bit like someone's passion project, so it's going to be interesting. There's a new Spider-Man sequel that I won't comment on because I feel like I need to play the first one to have a better judgment. I really miss the presentations and trailers with live action stuff. Sorry, I'm going off topic. Beyond the Wire looks like it's going to be one of those historical free word title games. I know it's a FPS and all, but I'm kind of sick of seeing a great focus on the violence because yeah, I know it's the Great War and it's it would be like criticizing Zelda games for plot dependence on Link, but couldn't there be more emphasis on achieving your goals in other ways like um, like just capturing points or taking people prisoner? Couldn't there be more of a prisoner mechanic going on? Not all action has to be about bloodletting, but still have it about combat, not pacifism. Sun has a kind of unique art house look to it that doesn't look that pretentious, but it seems to go all the way with what it's trying to do. Kingdom Hearts 2020, and I'm just going to call it that, it's refreshing to see a 2D look to it, even though I wish it could have been, you know, more of a 2.5D. I'm not saying like achieving levels of Cuphead, but more like this, the closest to that Disney style. I'm probably asking for too much, or I don't know enough. There's a new jump game that I'm probably not going to remember the title of. It's on Nintendo, so I'm probably not going to play it, but hey, I can still be excited about it. Scarlet Nexus had me instantly somewhere, I don't know, but it looks cool. I'm disappointed that there's no more on the new Amnesia game, nor even Enchantled Portals. Even though I still think that game's a Cuphead ripoff, I still really do love the 2D work. It might be interesting to give it a look. I mean, watch an LP. And at last, there's Stray. That definitely looks pretty good. With a really well-made cinematic trailer, it's this dreary, miserable, mundane robot society until you have that meow at the end, and then I'm like, yep, my heart is all yours. It's so desolate and comforting at the same time. So I'm fascinated what's to come of it. So I guess that's another year without a new JFPS. 
Yeah, I know there are Japanese first-person shooters out there. I'm talking about that one that you would put down money for. You know what I mean? Okay, you don't, but who cares? So thank you again for coming all the way with me, and I really do hope to be back on track soon. So stay safe, in fact, no, stay incredibly safe, and connected, and say no to crowds, and this apparently, but definitely this, but definitely go near this. It's got a everyone's free to wear sunscreen vibe to it.